Good morning, everyone. Uh, so today I'd like to uh, start with a question. Uh, actually, uh, about one of the famous, of the most famous question the literature knows. Uh, to be or not to be? For today morning, this is not the question. For today morning, the question is to protect or not to protect. This is the question, and I hope I didn't start with the offending of William Shakespeare Ghost. Uh, anyway, let's move uh, to, the, to the presentation. Uh, what is the topic about? Uh, if we think about the industrial design, if we think about the, copy, uh, the trademark uh, protection regime, the subject matter of the protection is usually obvious. It's probably not obvious uh, in the case of the patent law, but uh, if we have a registration of the trademark, it's obvious that uh, we have a subject matter of the protection because the trademark, as it was registered, is, pro is protected. And what is the subject matter of the protection in copyright regime? Uh, it's a creation. What actually is a creation? Why this topic? Because I'd like to speak today about uh, one of the basic issues, the very basic issues of the copyright law about the definition of the creation. Why this topic? Because in Poland, the courts are facing with many, many, many cases uh, in which uh, the court has to decide whether we have the creation or we do not have a creation. Um, yeah, let's start uh, from the beginning. Um, so uh, firstly, I'd like to, I don't know, so some, some technical problems. Okay, here? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So firstly, I'd like to present legal background. Uh, later, two cases from the Court of Appeal in Warsaw, and I, I've already presented the justification of the choice of the topic. Sometimes, uh, when I think about these cases, I have the, the impression, probably the false impression, that the parties are thinking this way. I don't have a trademark. I don't have the industrial design. This is not the invention. So probably let's try with the copyright. Let's, let's uh, treat the copyright like the rest of the world, like if something is not protected with the other IP right, it must be protected by the copyright. And this, this path is a little bit dangerous because uh, it, it leads to the danger of overprotection. Uh, what is protected by copyright law? We have done some international regulations, uh, some EU law provisions, and Court of Justice judgment as well. Let's start with the TRIPS agreement. It's the agreement on relate, trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights, so-called TRIPS. Um, and it refers to the Bern Convention. What TRIPS says? That all members shall comply with Article 1 to 21 of the Bern Convention. So the TRIPS agreement moves us to the Bern Convention. And Article 2, uh, Section 1 of the Bern Convention uh, gives, the, uh, gives the scope of the protection. So the scope of the copyright protection shall include every production in the literary, scientific, artistic domain, whatever may be the mode or form of its expression. For example, books, pamphlets, writings, lectures, addresses, um, uh, the, the arts of cinematography, drawing, painting, architecture, sculpture, lithography, photography, and so on. Yes, uh, we've got some Court of Justice judgments as well about the level of creativity uh, expected to, for, the, for the copyright regime. So uh, what the Court of Justice said, what is important to determine whether we have a creation or not. Firstly, the author should be able to express his creative abilities in the production of the work by making free and creative choices. These choices are very, the, the possibility to make the choices is very, very important. And by making these various choices, the author stamps the work with his personality, with his personal touch. For example, the photographer can choose the background, the subject's pose, the lighting, the framing, the angle of view, the atmosphere, 
At the developing techniques, he can choose whether to use software uh, or not. Uh, and what the Court of Justice said, that there is nothing like the minimum standard of creativity to create the work. Uh, so the requirements for the creative result that should be protected by the copyright law are not very high. Uh, yes. So consequently, the copyright protection is sought by the parties for, a, for the results of very minimal standard of creativity. What is very visible in Poland uh, in the court cases in both instances. So there is a tendency, as I mentioned before, that when the result is not protected as a trademark, is not protected as the industrial design, is, the inter is not protected like uh, by another, another regime typical for any other subject matter of intellectual property rights, it can be protected on the basis of copyright law. But re let's remember that there is something like copyright law axiology. For example, the time limit for the protection of copyright law regime is very long, it's 70 years from the author's death. So uh, we need to bear in mind that when we say that something is creation, it leads to the particular consequences to long time, a long time protection. And, um, and sometimes I have that impression that the copyright regime is applied to the results that probably do not deserve it. And let's look at two cases. This was the first time of the presentation. Let's move now to two cases of the Court of Appeal in Warsaw. Uh, they came from the same day. Uh, actually, the 27th of February this year, so they are quite new. And I think that they represent the line of reasoning of the Court of Appeal in many of such cases that, comes to the court, that come to the court. Uh, in the first, in the first uh, case, the claimant is a graphic and he provided printing services. And the defendant run, uh, runs an agricultural machinery company under the name AgroMash. Agro is for agriculture, mesh is for the machine. You can uh, see, uh, see the name. Uh, and the name was placed on the catalog, brochures, and the promotional activities. So actually, this name was used uh, in, the, in the function of the trademark. But uh, it has never been registered as a trademark. And what happened later? The defendant comes to claimant to order some catalogs to be printed. And as the defendant, as the, uh, as the claimant is the graphic, he suggests to refresh the logotype, to modify it. And the defendant agrees, but he wants to maintain the name of the business because it's already been known uh, because of the presence in the market. And during the talks of the parties, uh, the amendment of the logotype go in three directions. Firstly, uh, the color is changed from black into, uh, into red. Uh, later, the claimant proposes to rearrange the two parts uh, of the name. Uh, one part is put up, the second part is put down. The one that is put up is written with bigger letters than the second one. Uh, this is the second element. And the third element, upon the request of the defendant, the claimant places the bird, the swallow, in the letter O. The defendant gives the pattern of the swallow with the suggestion that it should be placed in the letter O or in the letter G. And finally, we have something like that. Uh, looks like uh, on the slide. So we have the logotype agromash uh, with the change of the color and with the swallow put on the letter, in the letter O. And none of these versions has been registered as trademark uh, as domestic trademark or EU trademark. So the case was not about the trademark protection. And what is important, there are several producers of agriculture, machinery, and Polish market that use the same name, Agromash, and different signs like below, as you, as you can see. Um, okay. Uh, these, these three were uh, registered as trademarks. The, uh, the one important in the case was not. Okay, and what was the, the parties uh, stopped to collaborate 
and there was a, a conflict uh, in the parties, uh, like it happens in many cases. And the claimant um, came to the court, asked for the law of protection on the basis of copyright law, claiming that he was the author of the logo, and the logotype is a creation in the meaning of copyright law. And the regional court of Warsaw, I mean, in the first instance, dismissed the case, saying that this logotype is not a creation. And the appeal was brought by the claimant to the court of appeal in Warsaw. Uh, so the problem of the case was if the logotype was a, crea was a creation and what elements should be decisive to determine if it was a creation or not. And what was the reasoning of the Court of Appeal? Firstly, the court uh, based this judgment on the Article 1 of Polish Copyright uh, Law, Copyright Act, that makes a definition of the creation saying that the creation, the subject of copyright protection, is the manifestation of creative activity of an individual nature established in any form, regardless of the value, purpose, and manner of expression. So the doctrine and the judgments are concentrated on two elements of this definition. What does it mean, a creative activity? And what does it mean, an individual character of the result? The creative act activity is uh, referred to the uh, is referred to the process of um, process of thinking, a process of creating, uh, creating process of making. It means that the creator enriches the current existing reality with new elements. Something new, separate, objectively tangible is created appears in the reality, and the job is not routine, and the result is not predictable. So, uh, and what about the cre individual character? As the acti creative activity is referred to the process of creation, of making the creation of the creation, the individual character is referred to the uh, feature of the result. So the result, uh, arises from the creator's personality. The product must differ from other, the same manifestation of creative activity in a way that proves its specificity, originality, the touch of personality, the touch of author's personality. It should be unique. Uh, in fact, two elements are taken under consideration by the court uh, in determining whether there is individual character or not. The first, it's so-called Max Kummer statistical one-time test. Uh, we need to put the question whether there is already another product and whether it is possible in the future by another person to create something like that, uh, if it is statistically probable or not. And the second element is the creative freedom test uh, requires the answer to the question, to what extent the author had decision-making freedom as to the elements that make up the work, and to the what extent he used this freedom, uh, to the what extent the result of work product is not determined by predetermined requirements. Mm -hmm. And we need to see how the uh, how the author used this decision-making freedom if he, if he did it. So um, let's make a short summary of what was said before. We have the following elements of the creation. The tangible new object is created. The creation of such work in the future by another person is not prob probable. The author had decision-making. The author used this decision making. And final question, uh, if we come to the conclusion that it's not a creation, how it should be protected? Okay, and how does the application of the elements um, was done by the Court of Appeal? Uh, so firstly, let's look at the elements of the claimant's creativity. He firstly changed the font, but a little bit, 
it's still, still a very simple font. He changed the color from black into red, saying that red is not typical for agriculture products, for agriculture machinery, because when you think about agriculture, we mostly think about green because it's for plants, grass, um, we think about uh, yellow, it's for sun, and brown for soil, and red is something that is not typical. And the claimant said something that he made a huge effort because he chose among many types of colors and fonts. And the, what the court said in response, uh, firstly, the choice was not entirely free, but is determined by the function, because actually this logotype was used in the function of the trademark. So the trademark for agriculture machinery uh, entity uh, needs a saturated, clear, visible color. So, for example, pastel colors were eliminated. The F word is not important because what we, cre what we protect with the copyright regime is the result itself, not the effort, not the work put in the creation. Uh, the sweat of the brow doctrine, I think that it was typical for the US in the some period of the, of the development of copyright law. Uh, the claimant used the choice the, uh, in a very limited way. He simply proposed a different color scheme, but also uniform for the whole trademark. Um, the, a little bit different font, but also a simple one, the same in both of word elements, similar to the one that was used previously. And he proposed a, a proposing a simple minimalist logotype will not always be deprived of individual character. However, the smaller scope of reality transformation is done, the more difficult it is to grasp individual character in the result. Uh, and finally, the court said that the minimal change of font and the change of color does not deserve copyright protection. And what about the swallow? And the third, the third thing, the swallow in the logotype. Firstly, the pattern of the swallow was given by the defendant. It has not been transformed by the claimant. And the place of the swallow was suggested by the defendant as well, O or G letter. So the freedom of choice was limited. Uh, the choice of O letter is more obvious. It's more, there's more space uh, for the swallow to put them inside. And the part, the swallow in the letter inside is used in different signs. You can see some of the signs in the line, uh, in the bottom line of the slide. Uh, especially the two little uh, slides, uh, the two little logotypes um, are very well known because it's uh, Moda Polska, Polish word for Polish fashion, uh, and it was used probably from the time of 60, 60s or 70s of the previous century. So, regarding the swallow, the choice was limited only to the direction of the swallow movement and head of the swallow right, left, up or, or down. So the final conclusion was the minimal change of font, the change of color, and they used the pattern motive given by the defendant quite well known previously in a place suggested by the defendant is not enough for copyright protection. And the similar result could have been achieved by another person, by more than one person. And the axiology of copyright law um, says that this kind of input, the change of color, the change of font, and the uh, place, placing of the motif uh, in a place suggested by another party uh, do not deserve copyright protection. Uh, so the appeal was dismissed. Um, and another, and another, case, another case from the same day as I mentioned before, the end of February this year, um, what, what was the fact? Claimant runs the website about Georgia about the culture, history, cuisine, traditions, and the defendant runs the website about the wines, including the wines from Georgia, and claimant plays to text in the website. First, the first text was about tradition Georgian feast called Supra. It was a short text like for, as follows. Supra is a traditional Georgian feast that has been inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. The Supra was orig organized around the table that had a hollow in the middle. 
everyone ate from uh, food for, uh, placed uh, in the middle, which was supposed to strengthen the international personal, interpersonal relations, interpersonal rela relations. And second uh, short text, it was about must-see places during the visit in Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia. Uh, it was a own town in Tbilisi, um, national gallery, best wine bars in Tbilisi, odd baths in Tbilisi, and ropeway trip. And what the uh, defendant done? The defendant placed totally the same text in his website. Um, uh, the first text, it was, it has not been changed. And about the second text, the defendant placed a list of six instead of five must-see places in Tbilisi uh, in a slightly different order. And what was the reasoning of the court and the outcome of the court? Article 4, Act of Polish Law, uh, Copyright Act, excludes short pre press press releases or short press information from the copyright protection. And the text about the Supra, this traditional Georgian feast, is very similar to this category. It's written in a very simple language, strictly aimed at presenting certain facts in a reporting manner. And the context, uh, the context uh, is not creative. Uh, uh, the content is not creative. This information can be found on many websites. Mm, there is nothing individual in the content of the, of the text and in its language. So the text does not deserve copyright protection. And uh, about the list of must-see places, what the court said. The court said that the criterion um, is very popular. The most popular sites in center place certain place when we got and the guide we see the most you you if you go to Paris you must see Eiffel Tower and Louvre and uh, something like that if you go to Krakow to Poland you must go to Wawela and the old uh, old Jewish dis district and you if you come to Warsaw you must see some some sites I think that every every place uh, every place every capital has such a list, and it's very popular criterion. If the criterion was different, we could think about the touch of personality. Uh, for, for example, inspired by the historical figures, social, cultural, even by nature. And the, when the criterion is very simple, the choice made by the author is manifested only by the sequence of the places of the list. And because the sequence reflects the author individuality, in this case, the sequence was different. Thus, the obvious criterion excluded the individual character of the result. Uh, and coming to the end of my presentation, I'd like to say um, a few words about why this problem exists. I think that it does exist because we sometimes in the court, we feel that there is uh, we want to deliver the protection to the party who deserves the protection. Uh, like in the second case, we see that the, the, the defendant operated it be, its business benefiting from uh, the result of the work of, of the claimant. But it is not the best solution. It's not ever the solution uh, to broaden the scope of the copyright protection and the broaden the scope of the copyright regime and broaden the scope of the, of the definition of the creation. Because it leads to overprotection and the devaluation of the meaning of creation. Uh, what, if there are any other options, in Polish we have the unfair competition law. Uh, it's an act coming from 1993. And uh, on the basis on this act, there is a space to build uh, a space, uh, a space for the for the um, uh, protection of the party who deserves the protection, not on the basis of the copyright law. Uh, I chose two uh, two cases. There are many of them, uh, not necessarily so obvious as the two ones I presented today. We have, for example, many cases about photographs, uh, but it is not a photograph, an artistic photograph. It's just like, you know, for, for today, everyone is a creator. 
if we have, we have everyone has a tool, a mobile, uh, to create uh, many photographs in every minute. And the problem is if every photograph made this technique uh, without any choices, sometimes without any consciousness, some, sometimes by accident, actually, if, if it's work or not, if it's a creation or not. Um, yes, and that's, that's not all for me. Thank you for your attention, and once more, thank you for the organizers for invitation. Thank you.